Baby, today we are creating some beautiful liquid drum and bass atmospheric kind of stuff. Yeah, I love it. I love this genre. And give a, let, let me get my chair. I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful genre right now. It's fairly simple. You need to know a bunch of stuff on mixing, mastering and composing and all of this. But this is not a topic of today's video. We are just looking at the fundamentals of this beautiful genre. We are taking a look at liquid drum and bass. There's multiple different styles of drum and bass. There's neurofunk. <laughs> There's jungle. DMB, there's all sorts of stuff. But we are focusing on liquid drum and bass because it's just my favorite. And that's the main type of music I'm producing. My EP is coming up soon. I'm working on my lyrics, I'm working on my singing because my singing is not really on point. So, yeah. We gotta see, we gotta see what I've come up with. A few videos on songwriting and all sorts of stuff is coming <coughs> up in the future, so yeah. All right, before we jump in, I want to take a quick look at the characteristics of this genre. Liquid drum and bass is a subgenre of drum and bass characterized by its smooth and soulful kind of feeling. It uses liquid sounding synth melodies, atmospheric pads, and a tempo around 170 BPM. What instruments can we use? It's music, so you can use anything you like to, but guitars with a heavy reverb or delay will fit perfectly. The Piano is a real staple. The reese bass is also heavily used in drum and bass. A deep growling bass line, big part of this genre. Uh, it centers around 170 BPM. You can go up and down a little bit. But if you try to fall under the mainstream liquid drum and bass, you should center around 170. Don't go out of this range too far. What about the mixing? What is typical in this genre? We can use a lot of reverb, delay, special effect. Might use a granulizer to be a little bit more spicy and special with our sounds. Our main goal is just creating a smooth sounding sphere or sounds should dwell in this sphere there are some beautiful pet sounds you might use the road piano a vibey instrument just be creative do whatever you like to it also emphasizes on the rolling breakbeat what do i mean you might know the amen breakbeat it's a og sample every single drum and bass genre uses it and it sounds like this <laughs> It's been used in tons and tons of tracks. All right, that's it for the general information. Now you know what's going on. Now we're jumping straight into the process of producing liquid drum and bass. I cover everything you need to know so you're geared up and ready to list out some awesome tracks. All right, now we're taking a look at the drums and I already created my drums. We're just taking a listen and I explain everything that went into this whole song. Yeah, this is basically how my drums sound and uh, now we reconstruct everything and I'll explain everything in there. First, the kick. The kick sounds like this when we play it on its own. A really simple pattern, just like the basic electronical dance music pattern. We just moved this note from here to over here. In the end, we got a double hit. The first note is lowered in volume a little bit. So we create a bit more dynamic. We create a little bit more interest. It's always a great idea to switch things up a little bit so the listener is not getting bored. Small nuanced things can really make a difference in the whole track. Next, we talk about the head. So the head has two patterns. One really simple pattern on every second step. It sounds like this. You might already know this from like rap music, trap music, all kinds of music uses this simple repetitive pattern. And then we have a second pattern that sounds like this. Nothing too fancy, no pitch variations, no rolls, no <laughs> crazy variations. We just keep it simple. Uh, the only thing we do here is also play with the dynamics, change the volume up a little bit to make it a little bit more organic. Both together sound like this. And in context with everything else, it sounds like this. That's it for the heads. Next, we come to the snare. I used four different sounds. It's called layering. I stack snares on top of each other, given each snare a different volume, creating one sound. 
individually they sound like this. So this last sound is the most dominant. And it's just a really simple pattern on every second beat. Next we have some rims and a snare to add some more interest. You can place them anywhere you like. Those are just some percussive elements to add more interest to the whole track. We don't need to listen to them individually. You just need to know it's the snare, a rim. In context, just take a listen to them. A little bit more groove to the whole track. The last one is a small crash or an open head. Just another rhythmic element. And I place them down like this. Here and here and here and here. To add even more interest and a typical drum and bass characteristic. It's a set of shakers. High shakers. They sound great. They add another layer of movement and it's really, really, really noticeable. I would highly advise you to use shakers. And this was a shaker sample. I cut it up multiple times and rearranged it a bit so it sounds like this then we have a low shaker here you can see i just pitched down the sample it usually sounds like this It's just another lower layer to the other shaker and I used a bit of EQ on them. This is the EQ for the higher shaker. So the higher shaker is only audible in the higher frequencies and the lower shaker has this filter effect that creates kind of a home speaker kind of sound. Pushing it further in the background, not making it too powerful in the mix. Yeah, so this is it for the drums. They are fairly easy to create. Just be creative. You can switch things up, put some percussions in, put some other shaker elements. Once I heard somebody use a typewriter as the rhythm element and it was great. Just be creative and do whatever you like. Just experiment with a bunch of sounds and come up with something unique. All right, now that I've covered the drums, we can talk about the beautiful melody. There's two ways of creating your melody. First, you can use a sample like this one. And modify it a bit with effects. The second method is doing it yourself. Programming a melody and a chord progression on your own. With both ways, we can achieve a beautiful track. First, we are talking about the sample. So the sample is basically an R&B sample. This is a cool insight into my producing mind. I've used an R&B sample because of the fact that music can be created in so many different ways. You don't need to limit yourself onto like a specific liquid drum and bass sample pack because most of the times it's f it's fairly hard to find good samples. So just use whatever you think sounds great. If you want to keep the liquid drum and bass characteristics, just keep in mind that you want to have a lot of reverb, a typical instrument for this genre like the piano and you'll be fine. However, process this sample. When we go to the mixer channel, we can take a look. I cut away the low frequency to around 150 and we boost them a little bit on 2K. Next, a reverb. The reverb, a very typical effect for liquid drum and bass as well. Um, we use ROM in this example and these are my settings. Let's take a listen without the effect. And with. As you can hear, the reverb kind of pushes it away a little bit, creates some beautiful space, making it float around in a space. This is it for the main melody. Next we talk about the bass. The bass sounds like this. As you can already hear, it is just a simple reese bass with a volume automation, making it wobble. Woom, 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 woom. This effect just gives it a, a bit more of this forward momentum kind of feel. It's commonly used in drum and bass as well. However, I created this sound. I have not used the sample. I've created it in Vital myself. It's just a simple basic shape with a filter cutting off the higher frequencies. And like I already said, I use this NFO to create a volume automation on the level. Okay, what effects have I used? I used saturation and distortion with Camel Crusher. I used an equalizer to cut off the higher frequencies. I cut in a sub bass frequency area and that's it. The next and the last instrument is a vocal. Yes, the vocal is an instrument. It sounds like this. You don't know how it feels to be lonely. As you can already hear, there's a big reverb applied to this vocal and we got some delay as well. First, I want to give you a little insight into my automation. I created an automation clip to create this fadeaway in a form of a delay. 
I just use the delay to fill the space because these de because it just sounds great to fill these blank spaces with a fade out. This just creates a little bit more interest and a little bit more depth to the whole track. And the delay is cut off when the vocalist casually playing. You don't know how it as you can hear, there's just reverb applied to it. Let's look at the vocal chain, the effects. Um, we got a cutoff in a lower frequency area. We got a 2K boost. We got a bit of compression. We got some cuts at these frequencies because of the fact that my room was treated, but I don't have a $10,000 professional studio. So there are quite some frequencies that need to be cut off. If you want to get a deeper insight into vocal mixing, you can check out the video I did. Um, just wait to the end card or check out the I button on the top right there. I've used a picture on a slow setting so you can barely notice it. I think you can't even notice it in, in this instance. A, a saturation up just for some more warmth on a voice. And then the big reverb. I've used ROM again and these are the settings I used. The last one for the delay, I used an Replica XT. You don't really need Replica XT and ROM and all of these plugins. You can just use the stock plugins. They basically do the same job. All right, that's it for the instruments. You can see that I kept it very simple i just use three instruments a vocal a key and a bass and that's all i needed to create a beautiful track everything together sounds like this what you can take away from this is don't overcomplicate your tracks you can get away with a beautiful sound with just a few plugins don't overdo it with your instruments or drums in the end you will just cluster everything up and in the end it will sound overwhelming and messy and all over the top so just keep it simple and create some interest with some small little adjustments and like this delay fade away for example automation in general is just a really good thing to do to create some interest all right now we come to the second beat i prepared and the melody sounds like this really spacious and vibey. Whatever did created a pet and vital that follows a one, six, seven, six chord progression. And it sounds like this on its own. I just doubled the root note, put it one octave down, and I've added some transition note at the end, right here, right here, and right there. This is the pattern for the key. I used a key from Contact, and it sounds like this. Big reverb again, and some delay. To add some more interest, I add another key, and just play these two notes at the beginning of each section. The bass is just every root note from the chord progression, copied. I don't want to make this video too long. For the effects, we just applied the same principles like we did in the first beat. Earlier I said that automation is a great thing to get some interest into your track and some variety. Um, I created an automation clip down there for the bass. With the automation clip, it sounds like this. As you can hear, the cutoff goes up and down and up and down, and it just adds some extra spice to the track. I've just used a cutoff filter right there. I shifted it left, right, left, right. Then I went to the top there, add, add, automation for last tweak parameter. And I've manually created this up and down moving pattern. All right, that's it for the melody and instrument part of this video. Now we'll cover the effects, the risers and faders and crashes. You can see down here in a green color, we have all our faders, risers, crashes, and they sound like this. It's just a bunch of swoosh, swoosh, you feel me. Put the faders before a section and once the section begins. Sometimes you can put it in between. Sometimes you can put it in the middle of a section and just experiment with it. A small little thing that EDM tracks in general use is a small hit with a lot of reverb. Listen to it in the whole context of the track. Just another 
element of interest. It gives the track a little bit more variety. It makes a small difference, but it is a cool element to put there. That's all I gotta say for the effects. What else can you do? You could use a filter on the key, for example, that look, looks like this. Okay, here we have a standard EQ and shift it left or right to create a atmospheric kind of sound. This is another thing that a lot of artists do with their tracks. It might sound awesome if you properly use for the composing. All I gotta say is just experiment with the whole track. Create an intro, a verse, liquid drum and bass. Oftentimes it doesn't really have a hook. It just has a verse and then a more intense verse where it adds another element like this, for example. <laughs> This doesn't really work there, but you get what I'm saying. Like, just create a more tense verse part and you'll be fine. Um, you could use a bridge. That's it for another video. All right, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something. Um, I would appreciate it so much if you like the video, if you comment, if you drop a subscribe or just click on a little bell right there and just tell me what you want to see next. I'm open to everything. I want to grow this channel, like for real. I got a bunch of knowledge in my mind that I want to share. Tell me what you want to know about in terms of music production kind of stuff. And yeah, interact with the channel a bit. See ya. Check out my courses. Link in the description below.